As a part of this practice, we focus specifically on how global R&D centers can drive maximum value from India. We assess existing centers in terms of expanding their scope of work and level of ownership in India, increasing their value contribution by assessing what components of their respective value chains can be executed from the India center, all the while not compromising on the country's inherent inherent cost advantages. We also enable connections amongst the GCOE ecosystem and try to facilitate transformation in the most collaborative way. One of the most recent initiatives that we have launched, especially in the time of COVID, has been the Outplacement Network. Our Outplacement Initiative is a pan-India community where Zenov plays a role as an industry body to strengthen the ecosystem. We did see that a lot of organizations had to take the hard decision to downsize. What this network can provide companies that are hiring is access to this high quality talent. These might be individuals who were playing crucial roles, but were let go due to unfortunate circumstances. Organizations that are downsizing can reach out to us to be a part of this network so that the employees that you are letting go of are placed in other organizations who are also a part of this network as well. Currently, we have received interest from 45 plus organizations for this initiative, and majority of these companies are hiring. A lot of GCOEs, especially in the e-commerce, healthcare, and enterprise software domain are growing rapidly due to this crisis. To know more about this initiative, you can always log on to zenov.com slash outplacement dash network. All right then, without further ado, Let's get started by welcoming our first speaker for today. With over 16 plus years of experience in the field of HR, with a focus on talent management and leadership with organizations like Accenture and Sapient, Ritu currently leads talent, learning, and organization development. And she, along with her team, is focused on building an employee-centric learning culture, career, and performance management, as well as leadership development practices. Ritu truly believes in keeping people at the heart of everything she does. Ritu, pleasure to have you with us. Over to you for a quick introduction of yourself. Thank you, Anvi. Uh, I think Anvi covered most of it. Um, so I do lead talent learning and OD at Walmart, uh, Walmart Global Technology in India. We are the technology wing of the overall Walmart organization, which is the retail organization. Uh, the technology wing powers technology for our uh, retail organization we are <clears throat> we have 6000 odd uh, employees in india in this part of the organization currently and um, we are very focused on um, inclusion diversity and we've done um, multiple you know we've done multiple initiatives some really truly path breaking that I'm, I'm very excited to share with you and i'm hoping and you can learn uh, and I can share and maybe learn from the other panelists as well as folks who are attending the call today. So very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Ritu. Lovely to have you with us. Our next speaker is Gopinath Pulhagari. He comes with a rich experience of 22 plus years in people management for mature business and corporations in a, in a variety of fields globally. He has pioneered initiatives on talent management and transformation. He innovated HR practices, leadership, and agile HR methodology in his role as HR business partner, talent acquisition leader, and head of the function. Gopi considers that diversity is more than a number and a strong believer of inclusion at work and life. Pleasure to have you with us, Gopi. Over to you for a quick introduction of yourself. Hey, uh, thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, excited to uh, talk to all of you. Uh, talk to Ritu and Renuka as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, at Verizon, uh, it's been uh, it, it's been a great journey over the last nine years. Uh, we pride ourselves uh, not only in technology but uh, 
other other facets of technology as well, uh, which is diversity and inclusion. We pride ourselves with execution. Uh, we were the first on 5G. Uh, we were the first on 4G. We were the first on 4G LTE. Uh, our goal is to be also the first on diversity and inclusion. Over the last uh, nine years, uh, we've had a phenomenal road on diversity. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to share uh, those experiences with you. It's been a journey. We have learned together. We have uh, learned from fellow panelists, from fellow colleagues, from fellow organizations, uh, going, going ahead with certain discussions. And I'm, I'm looking forward to share with all of you during this discussion, uh, my journey uh, and our journey at Verizon India. Thank you. Thank you, Gopi. Moving on for our next speaker for today, an experienced leader in corporate real estate and workplace in India and South Asia with a demonstrated capability of leading the function to support high tech companies. Renuka is skilled in leading real estate transactions, workplace functions, project and facility management and mergers and acquisitions. She is passionate about leading change, smart workplace, driving innovation, sustainability initiatives, and operational ex excellence at the workplace. In her current role, she is also the co-counsel for VM Inclusion India chapter, uh, which is a business-led initiative that is focused on creating a culture that is inclusive of all forms of diversity. Pleasure to have you with us, Renuka. Over to you for a quick introduction of yourself. Thank you, thank you, Anavi. Um, very excited to be here, and thank you for inviting me to this panel. Uh, so I'm I'm based out of Bangalore, and I'm working out of VMware India Software Private Limited. Uh, VMware, with its cutting edge technology solutions, uh, streamlines the journey for organizations to become digital businesses that deliver better experiences to their customers and empower employees to do their best work. So our software solutions span app modernization, cloud networking, security, and digital workspace. VMware is headquartered in Palo Alto, and we are 31,000 employees globally. In India, we are 6,800 6, plus strong, and our major presence is in Bangalore, Pune, Chennai, Mumbai, and Delhi. So what do I do at VMware? Uh, I lead the workplace function, which is more into taking up space for growth ex and expansions in India, doing up the fit outs or the projects that make it a complete office and running the workplace operations. What I'm currently excited about is the future of work that we are working on and the guidelines and how do we enable the workspace as we get back to office from the COVID times. Um, VM, um, in 2014, what we started off as VMware, VM Women, over time, we, in 2016, we launched VM Inclusion, knowing that we can do lots more things beyond, beyond gender diversity. So very excited to be here. My secondary hat is leading VM Inclusion at VMware India, and we are a passionate bunch, a passionate group of around 70 plus volunteers into various initiatives, which we'll go through as we go in this session. Thank you. Welcome to uh, all the panelists. Uh, and just to reiterate, uh, your organizations won the award last year uh, in 2020. And I'm sure uh, all the attendees today will definitely have a lot to take away in terms of, uh, you know, learnings and also to understand probably what is it that they need to do in their journey uh, towards creating an inclusive workplace. Uh, I'd uh, definitely want to quickly jump on to uh, the topic we want to get into today. Um, and uh, uh, probably I'll start off with you, Renuka. And then my question to you essentially is, uh, what is your organization's approach to driving your IND charter, right? And, and in terms of your advice to some of the audience, uh, some of these organizations who probably are at a nascent stage in their IND maturity, what is it that you have to share with them? Thank you. Thank you, Navedita. Um, 
So at VMware, um, our inclusion journey is driven by business leaders with an accountability to deliver clear results. It is a business-led initiative that's focused on creating an inclusive culture at VMware and increasing the representation of women and underrepresented groups uh, to reflect the communities that we live in and serve. It's a business change strategy driven by business leaders. And um, as we speak about it, it's uh, what we call as VM inclusion, which is being driven by the employees is, um, is an enterprise initiative. And I, like I said, I am part of workplace, but as a business strategy, I lead VM inclusion for the country in, Indi in India. So what does it mean is we are a bunch of passionate volunteers who have come together to deliver the inclusion and diversity charter for India. This is cutting across all business groups and we have a sustained group of passionate volunteers who is actually taking this to the next level. Um, so how do we drive our initiatives? We have formed a strategy for the for a long term or for maybe as we talk, it as, talk about it as maybe two to three years and then we take that into sh shorter or smaller milestones which we deliver it across a year. So what are these uh, three big platforms that we are working on? The three big platforms that we currently focused on is culture transformation, which is more to do with the cultural journey uh, that in any organization would go through as part of their inclusion and diversity uh, journey. And also on the representation part, how do we increase the representation of women of underrepresented groups within, uh, within the organizations? And the third is to do with the thought leadership and uh, more of strategy driven in terms of different segments that would need to get addressed. Um, so uh, what would be my advice as we, as I look at organize, as I look at anybody who's getting started on this journey is, you know, most important thing is to see that, that we believe in this, we are passionate about this and we are able to contribute more than more than our work or more than um, what we essentially do. The passion that comes along with it actually is what takes it forward. To bring the volunteers together is to have that same um, aligned thought process or in terms of bringing that alignment in the diverse thought process that we have. Very, very essential to ensure that we are inclusive in bringing in different thoughts into it and how do we bring together those thoughts, sustain it, and make it into an action plan, and we are able to drive the initiatives. How do we um, how do we bring the leaders? The leaders definitely drive this. But what I think uh, we essentially need to do is to see that how do we support the leadership initiatives, and how do we, as a team, able to drive it across the organization, across the business verticals, um, across everything that we do. How do we accept new ideas? I think that is what makes this charter grow. And um, how do we make those discussions happen? How do we give those platforms to have those discussions, have those different viewpoints, have those different um, um, ideas, convert those ideas, enabling, um, enabling those ideas to be made, made into an action plan and how do we drive it for a cause? I think that's where um, the role of a leader or a chapter enabler do lie. So that would be my advice, hold on to it sustain it, come together, grow together, and make and achieve bigger milestones. Thank you so much, Renuka. I'm sure people have already started taking notes in terms of what they need to do. Uh, quickly, uh, Ritu, trying to get you into the conversation here uh, in terms of your advice for organizations uh, who are in their nascent stage, but also in terms of what is it that uh, at Walmart uh, you're doing differently uh, and what is your approach, if you could share a little bit about that. Sure. So, um, you know, our, uh, I'll share some of the key learnings we've had, right? So, uh, like any culture change initiative, um, what we've learned is we should start at the top, which means that we need to build leadership commitment. Uh, bottoms up is also important for the change to be lasting. Um, so, however, the change starts with the top. And as we started the change, we also needed to declare the change so that people who are passionate about uh, the effort, the agenda, come and join us. So we started with leadership buying. We declared the change, the fact that, you know, we were moving forward and, you know, we're committing to uh, inclusion and diversity. And that's where we got a lot of 
allies. The third thing that we kept in mind and we've learned is that when we start out, we uh, we should be pointed and not boil the ocean. There is a lot of work that has already happened in the space of inclusion and diversity that we can lean into uh, while we continue to build in our own efforts and unique uh, value propositions. So uh, for us, we also started with uh, uh, initiatives around uh, diversity, the gender diversity piece of it. We moved on to persons with disability. Uh, we then uh, did LGBTQ plus and, you know, very focused on trans. That's where we sort of chose to go deeper uh, and uh, working with the trans community. We also started focusing on caregivers, right? So, you know, uh, it's a gradual journey. It cannot happen, uh, you know, at, at the spark of a moment. The also other thing to keep in mind is that uh, it is a chain journey, right? And, you know, um, one of the things that, uh, you know, helps to anchor to is a framework, right? For example, there's this results pyramid, I'm sure a lot of uh, chain practitioners use it, which talks about, you start with experiences, uh, which leads to beliefs, and these beliefs leads to action and then to re results. And that's where I think the whole DNI effort also sits in, right? So uh, we start with experiences where, you know, where we bring the leaders on board who start sharing their experiences, we tie up with, or we work with the community, uh, we work with persons with disability, we work with um, individuals from the diverse community, and we bring about experience building beliefs, which lead to actions and results. And, you know, uh, to make it more tangible uh, from an experience perspective, right? So there are sort of three anchors for our diverse, inclusion and diversity approach. It starts with engage, where we are focused on a culture of uh, advocacy, where we share experiences, right? And that's where our change journey starts. Uh, and these advocacies lead to change in beliefs. Then we go into enable and empower. So engage, enable, and empower. Enable and empowerment is about, enablement is about development, about the support that we make available uh, to the individuals from these diverse communities. And empower is about policies and uh, affirmative action that we uh, take to ensure that you know um, people are empowered so that's in terms of how we go about it um, and you know staying with with the change in the results pyramid that I spoke about in the experiences space and I know a lot of people are beginning to do this but I think one of the uh, one of the things that really gave us a lift right and you know sort of a uh, initial um, go ahead and a good start was the fact that we our enablement journey with our leaders and then also with a lot of our uh, employee groups start with started with engaging experts, DNI practitioners, experts in the industry that's available today. We also engaged with individuals from the community, right? And you know, we had a lot of persons with disability, trans individuals come and interact with our leaders, right? Share their story, share their experiences. Uh, creating that forum for our leaders to also share their experiences, hear from, you know, uh, individuals at the receiving end of it all, right? Uh, so that was something that, you know, we did unique. I mean, you know, I've worked on DNI uh, in different organizations, but uh, when we started with this effort, I have seen uh, sort of a big jump in the start point itself. So, you know, that's that's one thing I recommend, you know, apart from the other things from the framework we use around in age, uh, engage, enable, empower, the fact that we start with leadership, but we declare change and we go one by one. I think the other thing that I have experienced in terms of how you get a jump start is to uh, help leaders and associates get that experience, form their stories and start changing beliefs. Uh, there is, I'll talk about the actions and commitments um, when we get to the other questions, but you know, I think that's that's from a starting point. Thank you so much, Ritu. And a quick minute uh, uh, to appreciate the background that you have there. Uh, I see sign language as well as Braille. Uh, so uh, yeah, completely appreciate uh, that particular background that you're using currently. Uh, moving on, uh, Gopi, uh, on the similar ri lines, right? Uh, what according to you and at Verizon specifically, um, is, is the most challenging aspect when it comes to starting the entire inclusion and diversity charter itself. So if you could tell us a little bit about your journey, that would be really helpful. Gopi, you're on mute. You'll have to unmute yourself, please. Yeah. 
thank you i echo what renuka and ritu did uh, mention uh, but i'll i'll walk you through our own journey uh, arjun our own journey is not very glorious uh, back in 2014 uh, as leaders of the organization we were having a conversation and we had one of our execs uh, visit us in india uh, and uh, we were just having a conversation at the end of the conversation it was a casual remark to say hey uh, we are talking about diversity we are talking about inclusion but we don't see diversity in the leadership here that's how the journey start the journey started the spark came across well we had diversity charters right across uh, uh, the globe and india at that point uh, is when it stuck us uh, i walked right out of the room and said hey uh, we need to walk the talk uh we went back made the first investment from hr to say hey uh, here's one resource that we are putting in for diversity and inclusion uh, that's how our journey started uh, you know 12 uh, 10 10 years back uh, and it's been one hell of a journey uh, it's been a journey where we won several awards uh, we've been uh, in the top 10 uh, in most of the awards that industry awards that come in uh, as we speak i think uh, we started off with diversity and uh, with a focus on gender because that's where we really wanted to look at uh, and then we built in a culture uh, we we started building in the culture right hr and from the organization to say hey look at promotions look at look at uh, merit increases awards all of these uh, bought in the gender gender diversity focus and i think after a couple of years uh, we have taken the food of it uh, now it we come apart and parcel of our ethos uh, of every leader the way they think about it i think uh, uh, one of the things at verizon we believe uh, is uh, to put the horses before the carts uh, our journey from gender then slowly moved on to uh, people with disabilities i think uh, sensitization was a really important part uh, when i say sensitization even awareness uh, so what we really did was to engage external consultants and ensure that people who are blind and people with wheelchair were able to reach every single corner nook and corner of our office uh, we came up with close to 500 observations uh, that starting right from the road uh, to reaching our office and within our office i think it was one uh, you know it was a great collaborative ex- uh, experience with uh, just not internal stakeholders but external stakeholders and the government of india uh, the government of the state uh, in all the three uh, regions that we worked and i'm happy to say that uh, you know that journey uh, post the sensitization of the leaders the infrastructure changes has put up in a put us in a very sound platform where uh, last year we went ahead and uh, won a couple of awards for the most disabled friendly organization from an infrastructure perspective uh, and we are proud about that so again uh, the narrative then uh, started some time back about uh, you know from P- pwd to uh, veterans uh, right uh, we are also pride ourselves in the us we are the number one company for veterans i think the journey started in veterans again uh, from a hr perspective and from a leadership perspective we thought it's right for us to invest in our own uh, teams first and i went ahead looked at hiring for our own teams because that's the way you set the culture you do it first you walk the talk and then your teams look at i think that journey is also taken off uh, very very well uh, i would say i think right now what what we are really focused on uh, is what ritu spoke about Uh, and and a bit of renuka spoke about lgbtq and pride i think that's a focus area that we have uh, but uh, the advice to any organization uh, start small uh, look at what is internal for you what is relevant for you make the right investments uh, i don't say monetary investments but the right leadership commitments uh, from that perspective uh, and picking on from renuka sustain that momentum Uh, walk the talk, lead the path, and then you see the results follow. Uh, uh, like Ritu said, uh, engage, uh, empower, and and those are the frameworks we use as well. Uh, but I think it's 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 been a great journey over the last ten uh, to twelve years.
Thank you. Thank you, Gopi. Thank you so much. And I think uh, in terms of takeaways for the attendees, we're already having a lot uh, in terms of what they can do in their journey itself. A lot of questions coming in and I see that Ritu, you've uh, taken the opportunity to answer some of them as well. I would uh, request the panelists uh, while while uh, the other speakers are speaking. If you have time, if you find the time, please do answer those questions as well. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, but I would also try and uh, get some of those questions in towards uh, the last 10 minutes uh, where we have kept aside for audience Q&A itself. Um, quickly moving on to the next piece, and this is something that we've already alluded to um, a little bit already in terms of uh, leadership involvement, right? But uh, largely in terms of the role of the uh, leadership uh, and the council itself and the volunteers in the entire process and the agenda of inclusion and diversity within an organization. Uh, Renuka, what is it that um, you feel uh, is that particular role when it comes to all of these uh, key stakeholders? And how do you get the organization on board, essentially, uh, to, to have that eye in the agenda and to get them on board, not just the leadership, probably even the larger organization, if you could uh, share your views on that. Renuka, you're on mute. You'll have to unmute, please. Sorry. sorry. No worries. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, great question, Nivedita. And uh, I really love this discussion. There's a lot of great points uh, coming in and um, good takeaways for us, for us itself. Um, so, on the role of, um, you know, like inclusion is for everyone personally, professionally, community, organization. Everyone is, um, everyone is a part of the journey and it's there for everybody uh, to experience it as well as it's for our own um, sustained, um, what should I say, sustained learning experiences as well as the growth that we all want to go through. So what's in it for everyone or what's the role that we all play? Um, for the leaders, um, like I said, um, leaders are driven by clear strategies. They have to, they set the goals. They create the action plans and they really uh, make sure that they are there leading the way. Uh, the council is for, um, as the ideas come through, as of uh, different, um, what does the company want to achieve? How is, what is it for the talent that we, we bring in the best talent? How do we retain the talent? Or um, what's in it? Uh, what are the growth opportunities that we are looking at? The council, it's for the council to set the strategy to see that whatever is the action plan or whatever is the goals being set, it's we are realizing that or we are trying to make sure that it happens. Um, the the or they also serve as strategic advisors for what we want to achieve, and they also bring in experts into the play to to depending on what's a what's that step forward that we want to do and move ahead. HR um, HR is an advisory to the whole um, inclusion strategy and inclusion council and the journey that we are in. Um, the managers um, definitely have a big role to play in terms of they really actually walk the talk. They are the role models for the employees. Um, employees can contribute in many ways. They, they come in as volunteers. Managers do come in as volunteers from across the business functions. And what they do is they participate in the various BNI uh, programs. They actually uh, make sure that their voice is being heard. They have a role to play in terms of ideas that they can bring in that what can we do differently and how, how do we want to take that initiative forward? So it's for everyone. So, but if you ask me what's in it for the volunteers, it's a, it's a journey that we all go through uh, something. We are working on something that's really passionate for us. We are working, we have the ideas, we want to execute a plan, we want to go beyond our work. This gives an opportunity for all of those, all, all of them who really want to experience, um, get a leadership experience in terms of, um, it's also developing leaders, the ability to cut across all the business groups, the ability to um, network with people who may, you may not be networking in your business vertical. The opportunities are tremendous. It's more important for you to make sure that you do not have the fear of unknowns. You are creative. You are curious. You can sustain your plan. You can sustain. You can bring in ideas. You really can make a team. You can uh, make sure that uh, you are being heard and you want to execute on the plan. I think the inclusion journey that we are all into gives us a platform 
to go beyond ourselves and actually to strengthen ourselves as we go through the journey. So it's there for everyone. Um, you know, like it's the, it is for everyone. It removes the blind spots um, in whatever we do. We are open to more experiences, more ideas coming in. We are being heard and we want to be heard as well as we want to listen to new concepts. I think that's the inclusion journey all about. From our own experience, what we started off as VM Women in 2014, and as we looked at the more opportunities that we have, and we made it, uh, and we launched VM Inclusion in 2016, from where we started off with gender diversity, uh, we are currently with like Gopi and Ritu covered. We started off with um, disability pod. Um, it's it's uh, you know like there's a lot of new volunteers who came in as we started off with the disability pod from across the business groups. Some of them are working externally as well as passionately contributing internally as well. They have set up a plan for themselves for across the year. They're executing to the plan. Uh, we do have the pride of the LGBTQ community. Again, very, very passionate and across all the locations um, to do with um, also the veteran spot that was uh, just started off in, um, in, the, in towards middle of last year. Um, more, so many volunteers joined. Everyone is connected in some way or the other as we talk about veterans, it's somebody in the family, it's somebody whom you know, the passion is tremendous. Um, also to do with women in tech, it's a huge part which is being run very successfully by a team of very passionate volunteers. So I would say full credit to all the teams who have been working through all this and uh, bringing together new ideas, new concepts and what they want to do differently. That's what makes it happen. So if you ask me, it's for everyone and everyone can contribute. Hey, thank you so much, Renuka. And absolutely uh, mirror your thoughts there when you say that it's it's not just the leader's agenda or the HR's agenda, but every single employee in the organization needs to take take it up as a cultural behavioral shift itself. I completely uh, agree with you there. Uh, I just wanted to probably get in um, uh, Gopi's thoughts in terms of um, certain insights that you can share um, in terms of getting the leadership more involved, right? How do you get them to sponsor for inclusion initiatives within your organization itself? And probably also look at it from an external ecosystem perspective, look at it from an outreach perspective also, because the problem is much larger than just the bubble within the organization. So how do you enable that and how do you get them involved? That's a good, that's a great question, Nivedita. So let me take, uh, let me try and attempt this, uh, you know, uh, internally and externally, what do we do? Uh, one of the things that uh, we set out uh, in the organization, like Renuka mentioned, uh, HR is just an enabler, right? Uh, it's not the one who owns the diversity and exit. So the diversity, equity and inclusion charter, which is entirely run by the business. Uh, they do the charter. They leaders own up every single initiative. Uh, they have executive councils. They have uh, they have targets, uh, not targets necessarily. They, they do the charters. I think as from a Verizon India HR perspective, what we did was to see, hey, fine, we're doing all of these charters. How do we measure these charters, right? What does it really mean? Uh, I think what we really would like to see is uh, reflect to the leaders a dashboard to say, here's your diversity dashboard, right? When I say here's your diversity dashboard, a single view of what your gender diversity is, what your pride, uh, LGBTQ sensitization, uh, like Ritu said, tech makers, how many of you are you sponsoring women and tech makers? How many of them are people with disabilities? What's your supplier diversity? All of this at a single piece. Uh, and a bit of, uh, you know, uh, a bit of uh, gamification, uh, you know, where that leads to a healthy competition between the leaders. Uh, not necessarily that we want to create this competition, but we want to reflect the truth uh, of what we really would like to do about. And it's important that we commit to these goals, right? Uh, when I say we commit to these goals, our short-term incentives or our year-end rewards are linked to our diversity goals. Uh, diversity and sustainability goals. A five percent of that is the diversity and sustainable goals that runs through our culture and our, our veins. So that's how we came across this journey. The leaders themselves 
have been phenomenal uh, in a way that uh, they have uh, looked at sensitization programs. We've had uh, diversity summits. Uh, we had aspiration series. We want to leverage every leader coming into India and uh, talking about how do we inspire, aspire, and you know, engage these uh, people from within the organization, be it uh, running, uh, picturizing some of the women, picturizing some of the uh, high achievers, uh, the tech makers program, the mentoring program, several of these. But I thought uh, what was really important was uh, we were getting extremely inward focused. I thought uh, we live in this society and it's important uh, to give back to the society. And that's when we said, hey, uh, we've been talking about diversity. Uh, let's change the gear to talk about inclusion, right? Uh, when we talk about inclusion, I would like to talk about a program, uh, which is our flagship program called Project Athena. So what in Athena we would like to achieve is uh, to look at inclusion of socially and economically weaker sections of people. Uh, we bring them on. Uh, the only criteria that we insist on, they have to be uh, below the uh, government poverty line. We bring them on to the organization. We train them for a six to nine months within the organization. Uh, the leaders sponsor the course. Uh, we take a batch of a set of women, uh, men, all of these people, put them through the rigors of life. Uh, it's a culturally enriching experience to see where these people come from, uh, right from uh, to the point that you need to talk to some of these parents. Why would an organization give somebody a stipend of 40 to 50,000 rupees and take their girl child away to a city, uh, give them accommodation, train them and provide them employment uh, to the point that we have to even pay for them to get them to the city, right? pay for the tickets to even to get them to the city because those are the cultural things. But I think that program has really uh, rewarded us with rich rewards uh, in terms of at the end of the Athenian program, uh, we, we throw open a job fair for all our leaders to come and hire these Athenians. Uh, and we always see there is a buzz of, uh, there's a bus of hiring Athenians because uh, they're really done well. And we are, we were surprised ourselves uh, with, with the, uh, with the amount these kids could do uh, with the exposure that was provided. And I think I'm, I'm really proud about the fact that some of these people are our top performers in this organization. Uh, and they have gone back and contributed back to their societies. Uh, this has been uh, a great journey for us uh, at, at Verizon India. Uh, so that's what I would like to talk about. Back to Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Gopi. And uh, uh, congratulations on Project Athena for sure. And definitely like the idea of gamifying and incentivizing the entire process as well. That's something that's extremely interesting as well. Uh, quickly wanted to uh, get in Ritu's perspective also in terms of how you approach the concept of building the inclusion and diversity leaders within your organization itself, because that becomes really critical. Um, we have to accept at the end of the day, it needs to come top down as well. And hence, it's really important for the cause to have the right kind of leadership as well. So how do you go about doing that? Yeah, so, um, you know, like uh, Gopi mentioned and like Renuka mentioned, right? Uh, I think for us as well, uh, the agenda and the charters, the associate resource groups are led by business sponsors. And uh, what we also do is, you know, while one of our leaders is a sponsor for each of these associate resource groups. We have one for women at this point in time. We have one for um, uh, pride, so LGBTQ. And then there is one for uh, persons with disability and caregivers. So each of these are led by our uh, leaders. But what we also have is co-chairs for these, which are our associates, right? These are our strong al allies uh, who have, you know, who are uh, able to share their point of view and able to shape the charter, right? So that that sends um, that sets the pace for future leadership uh, for for our agenda as well, right? So you know, um, so that's one key point. Part the other part, like you know, the rest of the panelists said, um, our ARGs are hugely driven by the allies who are part of these ARGs, right? So it's our associates who are uh, working with the sponsor, which is from the business. Uh, charting uh, what the agenda of these ARGs is. And we believe that's leading to 
us building future leaders who will be the torch bearers of the uh, of the agenda for us what we also do in you know since we are talking about ind leaders and how we are building that is um what we also do is we run as part of our hypo development programs right so the hype farmer development programs we ensure that we uh, have uh we touch upon inclusion diversity we give them varied experiences so that early on and you know we run these programs across career levels early career levels as well so we give them that exposure and experience for them to again you know for us to build that pipeline of leaders who are focused on inclusion diversity and while that is while that is more about how do we build bni leaders uh just for the agenda and for us to ensure momentum on the agenda what we also need uh and have stayed focus on is you know percolating it across the organization so while we hold our leaders accountable the top most leaders accountable we of course we have input and output metrics that we sort of measure and we ensure that you know uh we have equitable uh processes which are which we keep a very close eye on we also ensure that you know our people managers uh, you know the the real um sort of place where the rubber heat um, meets the road right Uh, our people managers are constantly enabled and you know when we talk about uh, like gopi mentioned right it's not just about diversity it's about inclusion so our conversation with people managers isn't just about you know the diverse groups we talk about um, diverse perspectives for example you know what is uh, how do you uh, look at you know, for example you know we are a tech workforce right so how do you look at people who come from different backgrounds different uh, pedigrees right different organizations that they work with different parts of the country right um so we go a little bit deeper with our managers to help them uh, have a broader perspective on diversity and of course you know there are metrics like everybody said uh, you know you need to have some metrics for you to make a dent on the agenda um our perspective is also that don't just look at the output metrics so not just how many people you hire but also how many people you put through the process and all through the funnel right similarly on your succession and development plans it's not just who is finally there but also at all levels how are you building and you know, how do you go back right at the starting levels to uh, for you to build a funnel um so um so that's that's some uh, some bit of work that we are doing um and you know in terms of our initiatives specifically uh, you know for the diverse individuals uh, for our um, gender diverse um, associates we start very early so you know very early in the careers we start focusing on their development focusing on the key aspects that uh, women need enablement on for trans for example right now we are running a program uh, on uh, trans development and in internship with periphery right and this is for the larger community you know walmart believes uh, to be strongly anchored in the community that it operates and so we are working with uh, with them on um, a development opportunity uh, for trans community so Uh, and we believe that you know these individuals as well at some part uh, some point will become leaders uh, who will again you know take the charter forward for us so that's that's a little bit of mix of things with me yeah thank you so much ritu uh, just a quick time check for all the panelists uh, we are running around 11 minutes behind the time uh, so uh, probably we'll need to um, you know reduce uh, the time limit from around 5 to like 4 or 3 for each question going forward uh, and also just uh, to bring your attention to Q&A section there are around 15 questions there uh, while some of the other speakers uh, uh, are talking i would definitely encourage you to try and take a shot at those questions i understand renuka that you want to answer one of them live we'll try and get that one in but for now the question that i have for you uh, is how do you approach sensitization within your organization and not just for gender probably Uh, overall uh, sensitization and specifically for the employees uh, within the organization how do you go about doing that renuka you'll have to unmute yourself yeah i realized uh, sorry uh, i i did uh, see some questions on sensitization um, and initiatives as well as awareness programs um, and i i was thinking that i want to answer this live um, so um okay so as we look at sensitization program you know like you are talking about various um, various levels across organization at the managerial level at the employees level at individual contributors and we talk about leaders so uh, and across the different um, parts we call it as a power of different communities uh, which currently in india we have five 
which is uh, one is on cultural transformation, the other one is on women at VMware, our focus is on women in tech. Then we have the disability, the pride, as well as the veterans board. Uh, there, is, there are sensitization programs that are running across all these pillars and awareness sessions. Again, this is being led by employees from across the business groups. Um, I have uh, support from HR. And what we could find is like, um, you know, it's a, it's a learning journey for us. It's a process in its own. And um, two things that I really picked up is it's that one size does not fit all. The programs have to be packaged uh, very, very differently uh, in terms of um, who's the audience, um, what, what, what is it likely to be, the uh, questions that can come from them, or what are they looking out for depending on their experience um, and in terms of the nature of their job and what they can contribute to. Uh, and um, we are going through a process where we do have sensitization programs for, if I'm talking about pride or disability, um, or even in terms of veterans hiring, what we see is that um, the nature of the questions differ, even if the same uh, program is being conducted a few times with an audience of 20 to 30, because we want to make it as interactive as possible with uh, most, mostly a dialogue rather than just being, um, you know, like a one-sided session. Uh, what we see is that um, to sustain that over a period or maybe for a few sessions, we really need to have involvement coming in in terms of the questions that we are receiving, how we are packaging it for the next round. All this helps in the sensitization programs that we are running for the disability as well. And even um, to another point that I really want to add is sensitization doesn't mean it's just a facilitator and having 20 to 30 um, employees or managers, or it could be a mix of all of them coming together. It could also be an awareness session in terms of recently, we had a great session for the disability part, which was, can you sign without ink? It's, uh, the learning can be in different forms. It needn't be with, um, you know, like a, a facilitated or a coaching session or a training session. Um, it, it, it's a learning sessions can happen in different forms. And I think one of our uh, great experience has been that the different forms in which we need to enable, it could be the leadership talk, it could be, um, it, it was a 12 standard student who came and gave us this program on Can You Sign Without Ink. What a huge response that that has been. And also the fact that that was, um, there's, there's a wider uh, attention to the program to see that can we take it across the region or can it take it across to other cities and locations. So I think um, it's to do with the fact that we have to make it um, multidimensional. We need to make sure that what are the different ways in which we can bring the awareness um, and how do we have more employees participating in it, depending on what's the nature of programs that we are being offered. I think um, it, it is a continuous journey. It's an ongoing journey. I'm not saying that we have cracked it completely, but we are trying, we are learning through the process and we are trying to do it better and, and make it as diverse as possible as we go ahead. But uh, the 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 nature of the sessions differ depending on which is a power of difference community that we are addressing or what is it that we are trying to um, achieve out of the program. What's in it for the audience or what's in it for the employees? I think that is a big, uh, that, that's the big, uh, you know, achievement that we want to do through a session. Is it, are we trying to um, make the purpose met? That's the most important part as we go through it. Definitely, Renuka. And then I definitely take away the aspect of one size does not definitely fit all. And we need to look at it in a very targeted manner. Uh, yeah. Ritu, from your perspective, how is it at Walmart that uh, you approach sensitization? Uh, is it different from what Renuka is talking about? Probably what else um, would you like to, uh, you know, probably share with our uh, audience here today? Yeah, so uh, it's actually very similar to what Renuka said. Right. I mean, you know, it is about uh, one size does not fit all. And secondly, you have to try a mix of methods uh, for it to resonate with a wide audience. Uh, what I would like to share is something that we've done specifically for our support staff. So um, because, you know, because we've been focused on trans uh, development and hiring uh, for the past year or so, uh, you know, one of the realizations as we were working now, uh, with the community was that our support staff had a huge role to play 
in ensuring that they, you know, uh, as we hire trans individuals, they had a welcoming experience at our organization. Um, and to share, you know, um, there was a time when, for example, um, there was a trans individual who was coming for an interview and was turned away by our security guard right at the uh, entrance of the campus and told that, you know, we don't hire individuals like you, right? And then uh, we've had, you know, we've had uh, when a janitor um, sort of had a conversation with a trans individual trying to use the restroom uh, and not a gender neutral restroom, right? So, so we've realized that, um, you know, and, and these experiences uh, are also as relevant for other diverse uh, groups as well, right? So we've realized that it's very important for us to sensitize our support staff, uh, which have a whole role to play, right? I mean, you know, there's support in the cafeteria, there's support staff in transport, there's support staff in security. So what we've started doing is um, we host sensitization sessions for them. And we put all of them through uh, a sensitization uh, on, you know, what is diversity, uh, you know, what is the spectrum, um, talk to them about stories. So we actually have trans individuals or persons with disability come and talk to them in regional languages, right? And um, I have been through some sessions and it's really uh, mind opening and so overwhelming, right? You know, to have these individuals, our support staff talk about their experiences, experiences from the family um, and, you know, uh, share that very openly. So um, I would say, you know, uh, it would be naive to, for us to assume that, you know, we need to work just with our associates and full-time associates and, you know, that would, uh, that would make the difference. And secondly, it would also be naive to believe that, you know, uh, a spectrum of people don't get it, right? Um, you know, there is resonance across and it is important to work with everybody, uh, you know, who touches all our associates. So, uh, so that's what I would like. Thank you, Ritu, for bringing in that perspective, because I think sometimes we get blindsided uh, when we talk about just employees, we forget about the larger ecosystem that is uh, surrounding us itself. Uh, thank you definitely for sharing that aspect. Uh, um, Gopi, I would uh, quickly want to uh, shift the gears a little bit and try and understand from you in terms of how you capture employee perceptions uh, itself in terms of uh, managing those perceptions to be able to then take the sensitization forward in the right manner. Uh, how does this uh, feedback that is gathered that gets built uh, to build that right sensitization program? And probably not for the employees. What I'd like to hear from you is um, for the larger team that you lead, right? The HR team or even the leadership team. How do you sensitize this group of folks within the organization? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so firstly, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can't improve anything that you don't measure. Right? Uh, so uh, like I spoke about dashboard, we keep tracking. Uh, we pride ourselves with execution. Uh, like I said, we are the first on 5G, first on 4G and all of those. I think it's really important to create an awareness when we say that uh, it's also important to look at the employee pulse. Uh, we call that a pulse course. Uh, diversity is an embedded part of our pulse course. Uh, we do that every quarter uh, and then we publish those results. Uh, leaders come back with action items. This is a way of hearing our employees' voices, uh, right? Uh, and our leaders committing to the pulse actions. And then the next pulse course will probably tell you if, if our employees are really seeing what you're talking or walking the talk uh, in that sense. Uh, right now, uh, from a uh, from an overall journey, I would say, uh, you know, uh, what we did uh, was uh, as we started the journey, we started talking about respectful workplace, uh, unconscious bias. These were things that we sensitized all our leaders through a classroom training session for two days. Um, yeah, even more, uh, right? I think the narrative somewhere changed to say, hey, uh, I think we are looking at respectful for workplace to start with an unconscious bias. I think the narrative then started to say, hey, fine, let's talk about conscious inclusion, because that is the theme that we really want to, uh, not about, uh, so then sensitization programs uh, for all employees every quarter uh, are implemented, uh, you know, uh, through conscious inclusion campaigns. Uh, that is for the leaders. Now, what do we do for employees, right? For employees, it's include. What is really important is they should be able to voice out their 
their thoughts, their views. Uh, so we have conscious inclusion campaigns where uh, people who volunteer can come and talk about power of allyship. We, we take them, we look at their experiences, we document those experiences. We have uh, forums where they can talk about what, what good likes for them, like a campaign. For example, it can be from their own personal lives, it can be from their office lives. Uh, this is the platform that we give employees. And I'm happy to say that several employees, more than 100, 100 odd employees come on these platform and talk about their experiences. Talking about experiences also is going to motivate people and create that chain effect in terms of what we really want to look like, or what we really want to do. I think uh, those were the key things for us. Pulse, uh, changing the narrative from unconscious bias and respectful workplace to conscious inclusion and creating an employee platform uh, where they're coming and able to express themselves in terms of allyship and what good, like, good looks like campaign. Uh, yeah, we have several campaigns like that, uh, moments, moments to matter uh, and wow, but these are some things that I can talk about. Thank you so much, Gopi. Um, and uh, definitely some uh, great thoughts there because measurement of uh, your key results uh, or what, what you anticipate as the major impact areas, that, that becomes the right way to go about deciding how you want to uh, have a certain program running or initiative. For sure, uh, agree with you on that. Um, I'd now like to get all of your inputs and I'll, I'll go one by one for sure in terms of the uh, flow as well. But uh, where in the IND journey uh, do you think uh, your organizations currently are at? And how often do you revisit the uh, concept, the ever evolving concept of inclusion itself? Because as we know it, inclusion changes every single day, right? And, and uh, the concept of gender changes every single day itself. So there might be mul multiple other things that we are yet to explore. So how is it that you do it within your organization? Uh, Ritu, if we can start off with you, um, then uh, we can go ahead with Gopi after that. Sure. So, uh, like you, like your question itself said, right? It's an evolving journey. Um, so, you know, for example, for us, uh, the Walmart mothership is much ahead uh, in terms of the journey at the center. Here, we're, you know, we're still sort of taking uh, the early steps. So, it's an evolving journey. I think for us, you know, the way we work about it is. Uh, we carve out a charter every year, right? And it's a, a moving charter. So we carve out a charter, but uh, we evolve that charter as we go working with one diversity practitioners, uh, DNI practitioners in the industry so that, you know, we make well-informed decisions. Uh, we also continuously benchmark ourselves, uh, you know, uh, with some leading benchmarking organizations to ensure that you know, we are aware of uh, what's happening in the market. We know where we are and it, it's more, it's more about ensuring that we are creating that inclusive workplace, right? It's not as much about where we stand on the ranking. Uh, we also um, we also continuously pulse uh, with our associates to ensure that you know we are responding to the needs that they may have, right? Because the demographics is constantly changing. Um, so you know, to keep it short, um, it's it's an evolving work in progress uh, agenda. Uh, we do carve out some broad charters around policy, around development, around uh, initiatives that will run through the year every year. Uh, but, you know, we evolve that and every year uh, the charter also evolves. Uh, so probably if I may just ask one question over there, Ritu, uh, in terms of how do you ensure the focus is not just on one charter, but uh, every year you, you ensure that focus is expanding. Uh, probably from just say women to something else. I'm just giving you a hypothetical situation here. How do you ensure uh, that happens within the organization? So for example, you know, um, women as well, right? I mean, uh, we started with focusing on our associates. Then we we uh, moved on the curve to um, to start working with returnship, right? Then, you know, we'll, we'll start, we're looking at, um, you know, um, people on maternity breaks and if we need to do something around that and if we need a circle around that. So uh, in each space, persons with disability, we've been working with persons with disability, but you know, it's been some focus areas. We want to expand it to other areas of disability as well. We want to focus on caregivers a little bit more because our charter is beyond that as well. Um, uh, similarly, 
when it comes to lgbtq the pride bit right we've been fairly focused on trans but you know the across the spectrum we're we're beginning to evolve right so it's about you know understanding what each of these diversity agendas are broadly in the industry right and while you start at one place uh, because you don't want to boil the ocean but you then start progressing and touching upon the other aspects that each of these diversity groups need to work on thank you so much ritu that really helps uh, uh, gopi in terms of uh, verizon um, where do you think you stand and probably if you can share with us your 2021 roadmap uh, and how is inclusion evolving for verizon yeah I, 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 so just to ensure that i don't repeat myself uh, you know uh, everything that ritu spoke about right uh, connecting back to the mothership right uh, but uh, the good thing here is the diversity and executive uh, and inclusion council really has uh, has the luxury and the liberty to uh, you know choose the agenda uh, which is a regional in context while we want to be a global company but we also want to be uh, sure that we resonate with the locals uh, here uh, one of the things that we did uh, essentially was uh, you know this year one of the game changers that we are looking to look at is the supplier diversity uh, which has been an important part of that right uh, so how do we connect back to the community right uh, are we really looking at supplier diversity and what does this really mean uh, means are we giving opportunity to uh, suppliers not just the big ones but also upcoming and aspiring diverse suppliers are we providing them as well as a thing and i thought it was uh, while this program was very much on for the last 2 to 3 years uh, you know uh, it was really important that uh, as well as in india we evolved this year and the executive council found it appropriate to uh, take a stab at it because uh, again uh, uh, we are a very uh, you know execution focused organization uh, we commit to our goals uh if we talk about it we really want to achieve those goals before a dead date rather than uh, post that uh, so this year i think uh, our focus apart from everything that uh, ritu spoke about was about uh, diversity uh, supplier diversity to focus that thank you so much gopi and uh, quickly want to uh, get your inputs as well renuka over here uh, uh in terms of uh, the goals and milestones right and i and, and i recall uh, there was a question around it in the q and a section as well uh in terms of your ind vision uh if you could share a little bit about uh, what what uh, the ever evolving concept of uh, inclusion looks like for vmware and in terms of uh, uh, where is it that you consider yourself to be in the uh, entire journey go ahead yeah okay sorry um so um to add on to what um gopi and um, ritu said um in terms of the goal setting um i'll talk first from the vmware uh, vmware uh, 2000 uh, 2030 goals and then move on to the goals with respect to inclusion so as we as look at the next 10 years we and our approach to building a bigger brighter better future there are uh, we have set 30 goals to be achieved as a company by 2030 and this is driving three outcomes on trust equity and sustainability and that is our 2030 agenda and as we look at um, this 2030 agenda and driving outcomes on trust equity and sustainability there are a few goals that has been set for inclusion as well in terms of equity Uh, diversity equity and inclusion it also to starts with the technology that our technology is accessible for all and it can we develop a technology that is inclusive and accessible for all we uh, drive equity through the of organization um, in terms of um, diverse hiring inclusive leadership um, equitable pay there is a lot of guidelines that been set as we look at the bigger milestone and the strategic outcome that we want to achieve by 2030 as we break this down and as we look at milestones that we want to achieve by uh, 2021 or 
the coming next to two to three years, what we normally do is looking at the bigger framework, looking at the bigger strategy that as an organization is being set, we look at as an organization and as a country, what we, what we would achieve by 2021 or in the next three years, and then break it down to smaller milestones for the organization to, uh, to, 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 to reach that path or to walk towards it. So that is how the goal setting happens. And in terms of what, what have we done differently for 2021, we looked at, uh, we had clear uh, strategy for 2020 on what we want to achieve across the five pillars. And I think there has been some questions with respect to that. And I really want to take that after this. Uh, so once we set up the 2020, what we did at the year end is was to measure against where we were in terms of what we achieved, what we didn't achieve, and what we still want to achieve as we look at 2021. Uh, so that's one part. We didn't uh, work as per plan across all the initiatives that we set. So what we uh, discussed and what we reviewed uh, over the past few weeks is, yeah, these are some of the initiatives that we want to complete in the quarter one of this year. Uh, there are new initiatives that we want to add on depending on what we want to achieve. The branding could be the same, you know, like if I'm talking about a mentoring uh, path that we have, or we, we talk about... Uh, I really want to talk about one more thing. Uh, Theater-based learning. These are some of the initiatives that uh, we have set as, as we have set as a brand or as an uh, you know like as a stage for what we want to achieve. But how we drive the strategy through that? How is it that that we pick up some milestones uh, to, on how to deliver some of these? I think that would be part of the discussions as we go ahead. Like uh, we have a program that is called Conversations that just started uh, last year because when all the programs went remote, we said there are some programs that we want to drive theme based on the different themes of inclusion to bring in speakers or experts on those fields or maybe even a panel. It could be any form of delivery, but then bringing that conversations in. Um, so this year, as we go ahead and look at it, we are changing it, saying that maybe everybody is not able to uh, participate in it as we uh, look at a program. So how can we make a podcast? How can we deliver things differently? So every every goal setting that we do, um, there, there is a review that happens to say that what we need to stop, what we need to start or do differently, what we need to continue. And if you're continuing, how do we do differently? These are all part of the discussions that happens in the council or in the, uh, the team, uh, the strategy team that comes together. And then delivering it is part of the whoever has been the champion or co-champion for each of these, they take it up and they will bring in different ideas to see that how do we want to deliver it differently to create an impact. So there's a lot of discussion that in gets um, happens through uh, different volunteers and different uh, people who have their ideas uh, to bring on the table, have that um, engagement, bring in the support team or build up the support team with the support that you require and make it happen. I think. That's part of the plan. And ultimately it's all, you know, like the big picture is that we, we work towards a strategy. Thank you so much, Renuka, uh, for sharing all of those details. Uh, um, and, and I think uh, we do have sufficient time to go over some of those 14 questions that are showing up on the Q&A section. Uh, so I'll look at uh, first uh, the question that's been uh, upvoted twice. Uh, this is a question from Mukta Arora, and it's for you, Ritu. Uh, the question essentially is, um, are, are the metrics uh, that Walmart India is using to measure diversity, especially gender diversity, in management and leadership roles to really see the outcome? I believe all of us are doing voice of employee surveys to measure inclusion and satisfaction. Probably uh, the question is to ask you, is there something else that you're doing in terms of uh, metrics and measurement? Um, yeah, there are a couple of things that we're doing, right? Um, so, for example, um, like I said, right, it's not just the outcome metrics, but the input metrics as well. So, for example, um, when we look at our hiring metrics, we look at right from, uh, you know, um, the pipeline, right, the resume, the the uh, filtering at every stage we keep an eye on how uh, the resumes move um so that's one thing that uh, i believe we're doing differently at this point in time uh the other thing that we are doing we constantly look at is our succession plan uh, which starts fairly early right so uh, we are very purposeful about our succession plan and you know uh, we keep 
Uh, we do look at diversity in our succession plan. Um, uh, we are, you know, in terms of our uh, processes that we run, uh, we are, again keep a very close eye on diversity to ensure, you know, we are equitable, the practices are fair. Uh, for example, uh, as part of our uh, performance management conversation, we ensure we talk about inclusion and diversity and biases that may creep in, right? So uh, people hear it every year, but we ensure we talk about it so that nobody's missed. It's top of mind for everybody. Um, so these are some of the things that um, I believe and I've seen, you know, we are doing a little bit differently. Thank you so much, Ritu. I hope that uh, answers the question. Uh, I'll move on to another one. Uh, here it says that normally it's observed that um, uh, budgets for uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, getting that in is a bit of a struggle. Um, how are your teams essentially able to influence that? Um, and how do you uh, make it a priority? Could you share some inputs? Um, probably Gupi or Renuka, if either one of you would want to take this question. Do you want to go first? Me? Okay. Um, yeah, it is. Um, I agree to that question. It's not um, uh, very easy to get all the budgets in place. And that is uh, natural, you know, like um, being in the, uh, whenever uh, there is a budget plan that is being in place, I think the most important thing is to do, is to set the priorities within the budget in terms of what, what is it that we are trying to achieve? Um, wh why are we doing it? What is the impact? And I think these are some of the questions that we need to ask as we put up these programs together. Important is to see that if we do not get the whole budget, how do we prioritize to say what is P1 and what is priority one? What is priority to, to, to um, to even just make the discussions happen because any budget discussion, um, whichever, whichever vertical that we are in or whatever we are submitting for, definitely there's going to be questions around it. Uh, what is it that, um, and being prepared to answer that and trying to say that, yes, this is the plan that we have. This is the milestones that we want to achieve. And this is the impact that um, we think it's going to happen. I think that sets a very... Um, it's, it makes, it strengthens or reinforces what we want to put across. That's one. And second is to say that maybe if you do not get budget from the same, uh, you know, where we are trying to go and ask, I think there's always an opportunity to say that, um, okay, maybe uh, the DNI uh, council may not uh, say that their budget is only so much or, you know, like you have to try to do it within this particular budget. But what we also try and do is there are businesses which really support some of these initiatives and they do come forward uh, to, uh, to take it off as, um, you know, like with the quarter budgets that they have or they want to help that initiative, they believe in it, they want to support it. So uh, again, it's not from one vertical or one um, basket that we may get to uh, do things. It may be uh, other businesses coming together because it's a business uh, initiative or it's a business-led enterprise initiative. It's not just um, the HR or one DNI council that's going to support it. It's going to be supported by other verticals as well, and that's my experience. Uh, but more important is to see that we really have a strong submission to say that this is what I believe in. This is what this is why we need to do it. This is awareness sessions or this is a program that we want to do, and. Trim out, um, even in that program, maybe there are two or three sessions by which, uh, suppose if you're putting a 10K, you may say that this cost is for the speaker, this cost could be something else. But what is the most essential in that um, submission that you have, even for that particular category? I think that's also important. Uh, and how is it benefiting all of us? I think it's more to do with the fact that it's also enhancing or enriching our experience on how do we make some of our submissions. So it's an enriching experience in that way also. So I would say go for it, attempt it, it will happen. Just, just go forward. Thank you so much. And uh, Gopi, if you don't mind, I have another question for you because 
there are a lot of questions out there on the list uh, the next one over here is uh, in terms of uh, engaging uh, with let's say your uh, associate resource groups or employee resource groups in terms of engagement specifically in a work from home kind of a scenario keeping the bunch of um, or or let's say the a group of volunteers engaged throughout the period of let's say last 9 to 10 months how have you been able to go ahead and do that so how have you been able to go ahead and so uh, thank you uh, you know uh, this is something that we pondered on and uh, incidentally uh, it was also one of our sustainability goals that we wanted to do csr and erg groups but i must tell you last year has been a phenomenal year in 2020 where we exceeded our voluntary hours more than a regular year uh, so for example right uh, we said let me give you an example uh, uh people today uh, we have a volunteering portal which is open to all our employees and we have sustained uh, we have said to the unicef and un that this many hours till 2030 we will we will contribute in terms of uh, our hours employee hours and last year was the highest in that uh, we opened up virtual virtual uh, volunteering where employees are able to volunteer for virtual courses Uh, be teaching uh, the hr has an option of uh, you know helping students prepare for uh, the resumes prepared for uh, competitive uh, interviews uh, and also uh, giving back to the society uh, in terms of health and mental health uh, where all our employees walked uh, walked uh, did exercise for everything that we said if you if you do 100 push ups uh, you know uh, and it's self self motivated you do 100 push ups uh, you know we give x amount of dollars uh, we double those dollars uh, to an organization that you choose uh, last year uh, as a leadership team uh, we contributed uh, close to uh, uh, 20 odd lakhs or 30 odd lakhs because that many steps were walked by all our volunteers uh, so that we gave that to adr cancer institute uh, the employees have a voice in choosing a cause uh, in different plethora uh, where we are having volunteering virtual volunteering uh, with every organization that we have and also walking uh, and your steps being counted as rupees and giving back i think that way we were able to engage we had to really go back and look at how we are going to do that in this virtual world but we found our ways uh, in that sense thank you so much gopi uh, another question over here which is very interesting and this is something uh, uh, that we ask a lot of organizations um, uh, as well is how do you combat diversity fatigue i mean is is there a point where it gets too much uh, is there a point uh, after which uh, uh, you know dni efforts mostly uh, behind the scenes are getting continued uh, the, i'm just reading the question here uh, the commitment from hr and business can be tough when we do not have too many results uh, to show in the initial few days as well i think th- those are two separate questions but i would like to focus probably on diversity fatigue itself um in terms of when does it get too much how do you ensure that it doesn't cross that line uh, ritu if you'd like to go ahead sure so we have to ensure as an organization that we are equitable for all right i mean you know um as long as we are doing that uh, the um and you know we um, we are being intentional about it right and we state it to say you know um this is being done for us to create equitable opportunities we cannot of course go on the other side of the curve as well um i believe you know i believe organizations mature and they do reach a point where you know they have a lot of um sort of wheels churning to ensure that there are the right uh, things and enablers in place and then a lot of these efforts a lot of these efforts continue to run in the background and they are not as much a spotlight right the conversation however needs to happen continuously right because inclusion is a culture belonging is a culture that we are building and um, when we over index on diversity profiles it feels like in you know overkill but when we the language is about inclusion and belonging and like i said earlier right 
it is not just about certain diversity profiles but it is also about you know uh, biases that come because we come from a certain place or because we went to a certain institute or because we come from a certain part of the country right when we keep the conversation more broader uh, i believe you know people don't feel the fatigue so you know it's about reaching a stage where we are mature enough and then it becomes background process and then the conversation on inclusion belonging however continues because that's evolving yeah can i add um absolutely ramka go ahead yeah i think ritu covered it really well and i just wanted to uh, chime in from the employee side of it also uh in terms of um you know there is always this question saying that because uh, at we are made the cultural transformation journey and many uh, the thought leadership all this is being driven by employees on across all the regions and across all the locations one of the questions that comes is do we want to drive lesser initiatives and focus on that or do we want to drive more initiatives because most of these initiatives are brought in by employees but i think the most important uh, part is um again there is nothing right or wrong about it you can drive smaller lesser initiatives which is in depth as well as uh, maybe we can drive broader initiatives because it it brings in a lot of employees together to uh, to not have uh, the fatigue i think my take is to see that we should be uh, hearing and listening to a lot of stuff to see that what's in it for the employees and what are they coming in with and are they uh, can we enable them to drive it uh um, to the milestones that they want to reach can we be true enablers in the journey uh so that would have more people coming in or more newer ideas coming in in terms of how the uh how they see uh, the inclusion journey as and what part of it they want to achieve and can we engage them the way they are aspiring for is it, it i mean it's drive one is it should drive the purpose of inclusion or the culture transformation that we want to look at it and also saying but can we really enable them i think they as leaders or uh, people who are trying to do that uh, leading the leading the council we do really play a part in making sure that how much can we enable how much do we want to hear and listen and to bring them on board that could be a part of saying that uh, i'm coming with a two, one idea today but i want to come with a different idea tomorrow it's fine but then do we really want to go through it do we to listen to it can we enable them i think that's one way of making sure that we are sustaining the momentum and taking the journey ahead bring in more people bring in more ideas and also how do we want to be truly participative with them thank you so much renuka uh, gopi any final thoughts i know we've already reached 11:30 but just to wrap this up uh, would you like to summarize anything from your end gopi you're on mute uh you know uh, i think they all summed it up uh, i think you have yeah uh, i think uh, renuka summed it up perfectly uh, i think uh, the secret here is to keep your ears close to the ground right because the employees have a voice uh, they are going to tell you if it's uh, if it's getting too much or no the pulse scores are a reflection uh, your sensitization programs and the turnout for these programs uh, the diversity summits uh the employees have a voice they come and tell you what they really appreciate what they really don't uh i think as long as you're grounded you understand the needs uh, and it's not vastly different from how these employees perceive it because you could have lofty diversity goals right uh, and the employees don't relate it it's not going to be successful i think what is really important is how you're connecting the employees to the purpose and that is really the key for me and it's perfectly fine you might have a sustainability goal that your employees don't relate to so don't run that just hear hear out what your employees thinks is pertinent to what you have regionally culturally and locally and i think that way you will find uh, you know fatigue going out of the system uh, if your goals are disconnected uh, if you're going to just borrow some global program and run it out here employees are just going to say fine i'm done with this you can run all your programs i'm not turning up for this uh, that's my simple mantra uh, this is just not not for diversity be it in your family be it in with your peers be it with your relatives i think it's being there and doing something that all of us cherish together uh, please find that out what what that is and that's the way that i look at it thank you so much gopi thank you it's very simple not a very hr answer but i 
I just thought a lot of the value so is like. Yeah, in, in the times that we're in, I think we need such simple mantras, right? And uh, unless uh, uh, you know we we follow some of these simple things, uh, we are unnecessarily overcomplicating it. Uh, thank you once again to all three of you, and uh, like to now hand it back to Anavi. Um, sorry, we went a slightly uh, overboard in terms of the conversation and the timelines. Thank you so much, Navi. With this. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of today's event. Thank you, Ritu, Renuka, and Gopi for taking the time out from your busy schedules and for sharing with us your learnings and your points of view. Thank you, audience. You have been amazing today. Without you, the session would not have been possible. The session overall was truly engaging and insightful. And on a personal note, I feel like if each one of us had at least one takeaway from the session, then the overall intent of the session is achieved. We've had a flurry of questions, I know, but in the interest of time, we were unable to take all of them. However, rest assured, you can always reach out to us at insights at zanop.com or talent at zanop.com, and we will ensure that we get your questions answered. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Take care, stay safe, and have a good day ahead. Thank you. <laughs>